के बारे में बिल्कुल बिल्कुल सर डेवलपमेंट वाला तो नहीं खेला भी मैंने पर हां कॉन्फिगरेशन वाला कुछ खेल रहा था ओके okay, तो चलो लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस इज व्हाट 101 और पता नहीं बी सी ओपन डिस्कशन एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग व्हाट यू आर डिस्कसिंग व्हिच इज व्हाट्स न्यू इन बिजनेस सेंट्रल 2022 रिलीज वेव 2 uh those who are watching this recording later on youtube if they would like to attend this they can go to this page this links normally get updated next day which is tomorrow for the next upcoming meeting and you can just go ahead and register on this web page there so as we start i'm about talking about what's new in the the 2022 release wave 2 release one important question that everybody asks is what are the new countries that are added in the product so this time there are 11 new countries which has been added in business central and this is the list of those countries which are available with business central uh saas offering and i'm not sure about on prem they're surely available on the business central saas world one thing to notice that all these new countries or regions which are being added are not done by microsoft they all are done by partner led localization and which seems a pretty good trend what microsoft is doing and i can be completely wrong it on it but in in the nav world microsoft was kind of responsible for each and every localization that was available in the product so there was a lot that microsoft have to keep in mind while they are releasing new version because all these localizations were also microsoft responsibilities but now putting that focus out from microsoft ecosystem and leaving that to the partner domain where in every region if there are partners who are interested in building a local version of the central with the local nuances around taxation and local features and regulatory authorities uh microsoft does help them in introducing events wherever needed to make sure that they are compatible their extensions are compatible and they get what they needed from the central and just for example india is also one of the partner led custom localization if you look look it from the innovation perspective as in how much microsoft have to focus on the project product itself it gives microsoft more space to think about the product than getting worried about the localization and they can leave that kind of they can share that load with the partners where partners will make sure that their apps localizations app are compatible with the next minor or major releases where microsoft keep focusing on the baseline product or the core product which allows these localization to work with this model in mind i think it'll give a uh, more bandwidth to microsoft to do more great things in the product while not worrying about the local features that being added into the product so it's a good approach as for me and uh, i think at some point in future microsoft should leave all the localization with partners and just deal with the product itself and focus more into the product rather than building these localization nuances i don't know anybody has any other opinions on that because i think this is the way going forward no okay yeah yeah i have no saying something no that's okay i mean don't have anything to specific on that okay so today i was trying something out and let's look at that because microsoft was working on it from past two releases especially around team integration and they have done some cool stuff on team integration with respect to business central uh where they also have came up with a solution to a very old problem that people had around licensing so we'll kind of see that i haven't tried it on my environment but i was reading some article 
uh, on MSDN and other things and trying something out, majorly reading around it. So let's see, as in we all have seen in the old versions of Business Central that you can share different pages from Business Central to Teams using the global share icon where you see the shared team. As you do that, it allows you to share it to one of the person on your team or to a group in your teams or to a specific channel. You can write one of the messages that you want that uh, this is my customer list or whatever that you have, and then you can send it. This is kind of the story of the past till now. Microsoft did launch a application for Business Central in your Teams, which now allows you to do more things. So let's have a look on it. So on your Teams, if you are a Business Central user, users can go into Teams and search for a Business Central app. And can add it from here. That's one way of adding it. If as an administrator of your company, you would like to enable it for all the users, I think there is an assisted setup, if I'm not wrong, which allows you to do, and let's search for it. Teams app centralized deployment, which means it'll go ahead and deploy it on all the users that you have, which have license for Business Central and will automatically install the Teams app on your system. Okay, so you need to set up some policies, I guess. But as an administrator, uh, if you're working with a customer who would like to utilize this feature, their administrator can set it up uh, by just following this wizard and then doing this set of policies wherever that is. But for the demo, we'll just do it on one individual user. Okay. Business Central is available in entire team by splitting it up into the channels. Okay, let's choose a channel which I have already. And I'm not going to, or let's set up a tab. Okay. And I'll come to it in a while what a tab means. So now what happens with business with the latest release of Business Central? Uh, that I think it is there and Let's go back and try sharing something now. Once you have the Teams app available and you go to the share icon, it actually understands that you have an app installed and it should translate this to a logical icon or not this maybe. Let's go into this and let's try to share this. Okay, still not updating. Let's wait for a while. Oh, because it's still loading. And this one time setup, which allows you. So let's talk about in the meantime, while this is happening, what they have done in terms of licensing, which will make sure that your users are happy. So till today, the business central, uh, not just the team app, but in general business central can be accessed by these three different license types. You can have a premium license of Business Central, which allows you to do everything. You can have an essential license, which allows you to do everything other than service and manufacturing. And then you had a team member license. This did not came up with the actual release, but in cumulative update to one, Microsoft added one more license type called Microsoft 365. So anyone who have a Dynamics, not Dynamics, but Microsoft 365 license, which is a Microsoft Office license more or less, will be able to access the data from Business Central in Teams with just read-only mode. So if you have some business owners who just would like to see certain info from Business Central, they can see it, but not using the Business Central client, but within the Teams client. You might have heard requests that, oh, our CFO would like to see this view, and but he doesn't do any transaction on Business Central. 
So we are not planning to have him a license. What are the ways? And then in the past, there was different approaches that developers and consultant took, like, you know, sending out an email every day of that report or that Excel file to a specific set of people who need it because they don't need to purchase a license for a user who just need to view some data on Business Central. So as of today, if you are on Business Central 21.1, it only activates from cumulative update one, then all your users who have Office 365 license, they can read the data from Business Central on Teams. But there is one catch that you cannot have all your users just on Microsoft 365 licensing. You need to have some users with these licenses. And then all other users will be allowed to read the data who have 365 licenses assigned to their user. So if there are any questions, let me know and I'll come to this in a while. Uh, let me see where I am. I'm on the sandbox, so okay. Let's do this like this, okay. Let's save this. Oh, yeah. So what happens with this is I actually came from the other environment. So let me try going there on that environment, admin center. Have the access. Okay, and let's go to the production one. So as soon as you uh, enable your Teams app, now you can see here your list of customers. Uh, you can have multiple users from your team while you're talking about this list. Based on your license, you will get a different view of the same list coming from Business Central in Teams. If you are a full user, you'll be able to do all the things that you would do in a full-fledged client from here. You can modify things. It'll go back and get it updated in Business Central. You can access the fact boxes. You can execute all the actions which are available on that particular page that has been exposed. And now if I go and if I'm here, which customer I changed? The first one, okay, let's see. The, the address has been updated here because that's just work seamlessly. At this point, for this scenario where you would like to co-work with your team on a sales order, you can actually come here and choose to share this on Teams. As soon as you do it, the business central should understand that, that you have it, and it is not for something, but uh, sales order details. Okay, and let's do a share. So as soon as you have done here, you come back to your teams and you go to your channel. You should see this here. You can click on it, and in this way, it goes here. But that's what we don't want. We want it inside the team, which is not happening. Okay, let's look at this. Logically, it should come like this. But let's talk about this new thing which they have added. So, like tabs, we all use in Teams. So we have automatically tagged this customer. And let's go into a little bit detail of how you add it. Once you are here and you click on a new tab, you will see all the tab, uh, all the apps that are supported to add tabs. One of them that's now available is Business Central. You click on Business Central. It pops up a window where you can configure which screen from Business Central you need from which environment. So it shows you what are the different environments that you have. And then from that, you can also see uh, which company you would like to fetch it from. Then <coughs> it is able to suggest or recommend which of these lists you want. 
Now it's not just a random list of the items that you have on your teams, which are these. You can even as a user define which items you want. So let's go back to the business central screen. Here we are. So that recommendation actually comes from what is available here as fit. So let's assume that you would like to see purchase written order list over there. If there is any, no, none. Let's say purchase order list there. As a user, you just need to come here and you just need to bookmark that page. As soon as you bookmark that page, that is available now here and that will automatically sync into the business, uh, into the team's tab option and you'll be directly able to utilize that page which you bookmarked there. As soon as you select that, <coughs> you can save it. At the same time, not just it, you don't have to go ahead and start bookmarking thing on your role center page. And that varies from user to user. If you are doing it, <coughs> whatever you have bookmarked on your role center, it will show that list. Even if you have a custom profile set and you have custom pages, the integration will be able to automatically understand it and will be able to show them in recommendation. But instead of that, if you think that, oh, I would not like to bookmark, but I would like to see on the sales order, I can just go here and copy this, come back here and say, paste a business center link instead. I don't want this tabs, but I would like to change that here. And I'll say this uh, sales orders, that will be the team, uh, tab name on my teams. And then this, and then I do save. As soon as I do that, it'll be able to read the detail about the tenant ID, about the company, about the document that you are fetching, and we'll pick that in here. Now, the cool part is at the same time, while you're on team, you can chat with your team and say, okay, here's a sales order list. This is important. And you guys can keep adding items here. You don't have to go back into the central and do changes there. So if five member of teams are kind of have an understanding what the sales are need to do, they all can work here and also can chat at the same time and talk about what they are missing or what's needed. It's a full fledged your client, the web client inside your teams, and that allows you to work with the team on this view. You can also expand this somehow, I guess. Let me see. Hmm. I don't see that, but I guess there was an option where you can expand it. And it'll always show a reference data. The only difference that based on the license, if you are not a full user or a premium or a you know, team member user, you'll only be able to read and in that case, what will happen is the options that you see on a screen will be limited. Like you will not see any of these actions. You will not see the fact box area. You will not be able to execute any of these actions. It will just be the read only permission on that case. Now how that's done, if your user is not a full user and they would like to see the data with you here, there are two, three steps. One, you go to your admin center. And then if you are on 21.1, that's minimum. You will see this action available called access with Microsoft 365 license. It shows you a tip here that, that will allow your non business center user to have read permission on the data. And for that, and you can read all the details here, what they can do, what they'll see and all. They can just see the basic functions. They can copy the data into Excel and all if required. And these are the licenses that a user need to have either of these so that they can read the data in the teams from the center. So the first part is that you come here and 
Okay, there is some problem, but I already have it enabled on another environment. I'll just show you. Okay, on this one, I have it set up. So you can modify it. And here it just a Boolean where you can turn it on. This allows you to invite non business end user for read only data access. The other thing that you have to do to make sure that as these users come into the system, they just have the limited permission. The application will try that, but then there is, if you don't know, there is a license configuration option, I guess. Yes. Which allows you to say which type of license that user will have and what permission you would like to give them. So like if you want them to have, what is that? Determined state of okay, financial content help, help. There is one for that, I forgot, where is that? But you can surely set it up like, like whenever they get access to it and try to access the data, they automatically get a read all role more or less, but they can read all the data or you can even limit what data can they can see. Just for example, if you don't want them to access to your financial data, you can just create a new role which just allows you to have other permission other than the finance and just make sure that that gets assigned to the user as soon as they try to access the data from teams. So you can still limit them what is available uh, for them for visibility as administrator on the teams. And as far as modifying and deleting the record is considered, that will work as it is based on the licenses that they are assigned to. So they are full user, they can do based on their permissions what's allowed. And if they are uh, a Microsoft 365 user, then they'll not be able to do any creation, modification or deletion of the record. Any questions on that before we move ahead on that, the team's part? No, all good. Okay, let me try one more time on this because that link should convert to a kind of a view if I'm not wrong. So let's quickly check one more time. I'm not wrong. It actually should convert to a card while I'm sharing it on team. Okay, it is not happening on my screen. It actually converts it to a card. And <clears throat> when it does it, the beauty is because if you share the link, the problem is that when you share it, it goes in and looks like this. The problem with this is that when you when a user clicks on it, who is not a business and user, uh, will not be able to access it because it will take him to the business center client and he'll get a warning or an error message. But if that comes like a card like this, then it doesn't cause that problem. And let me see if I can search for a customer. I think there are ways to search it within that also. Okay. So let's see what are our customers. Hmm. Oh, I'm not signed into that app. That's why I guess. It automatically verifies your user ID, validates that you have access or not. And then in that case, it authenticates you. And maybe that was a problem that I did not had authentication set for this. Now I can actually search here and see the customer or different records in Business Central and then I can mention them in my chat. So this is how it should look like when you share from your business center. The beauty with this share is that I don't have to go out. I can actually see all the details within Teams. <coughs> that will allow a non-business center user to access the read-only mode data without getting into business center with a full license. Okay, let's for the last time, let's give it a try. I have done that.
-hmm. Still doesn't work. And maybe because just because I'm using the teams on web, but it gives you that environment where you can do that. You can always change these if you want. You can delete them if needed, these tabs. You can rename them. Uh, you can do all the sort of things which you will do with the tab. There's one more cool thing, which I'll have to do a little bit more research, but as an ISV or as a partner, you can actually code to add these using graph APIs. So you might be able to package them in your extension saying that, okay, whenever uh, you install our app, you get these teams, different channels built in, which will have most commonly required list and actions, which a user need in that department like warehouse or sales and purchase. So that all is also possible using Graph API in your extension if needed. Okay, now the next pretty small thing, but a pretty important thing for people who would like to use the page inspection. Uh, till now in Business Center, when you access the page inspector, you can see the <clears throat> data on the field. You can see the field uh, caption or field name for each field on the table, either it's visible or not visible on the page. With this release onwards, Microsoft also added what type, what is the data type of that field that you are looking at on your screen? And then also what is the length, if the length is applicable for it. So when you go into your page inspection and people, even developers who are not recommending this, are doing a pretty big mistake not recommending this to their users because they can figure out certain things by themselves if you start explaining them about the page inspection tool there. So here now it will also show you what uh, data type of that field is on which this value is stored. Uh, people who haven't used it, it also shows you what extensions are part of this page. So if this page have five different extensions, it will list down all those extensions. And not just that, you should also pay attention to it because you will get more insight from it when a customer reports a performance issue. This is what I suggest my customers to tell me as they say there's a performance issue that which of these extension on this page took how much time to load if it's a page load issue. So it tells you how much time each of these extension took to load while if you know, there's a slow page, which is taking a lot of time to load. Then this can just give you the insight on which extension may be cause of the problem. It may be an ISV extension. It may be a pertinent extension that you build from them. So you utilize that and it also shows you what filters are applied and all. Users who are a little bit super user more or less and would like to see the data on the table. They also you can utilize this hyperlink to see this data actually into the table. So the new enhancement that Microsoft have done is added to the data type and the length if required on the page inspector. Okay, moving forward. This was a need, at least in North American version. I don't know about other versions where vendors needed to have multiple remit to addresses. The scenarios were that yes, I would like to have my checks to a different address rather than on the address from where I'm shipping or whatever the default address that is set up on your vendor card. So what has been done on that is that when you come into your business center and when you go into your vendors, you will be able to choose assign one or more remit to address per vendor. So I can say this is one of my remit to address. This is, let's say that other one, 48171, and the state UK, again, so that's a valid country here, okay. And you can define one of the address as default will be automatically picked up from during the purchase orders and all. You can always overwrite it. You can assign other details if needed. And then the same way you can create any additional one, say 002. 
And this goes with, let's say, Delhi. Earlier. Okay. In. Now this vendor have two addresses. Just for example, and one of them is set as the default one. As soon as you create a document for them, let's say if it's a that vendor uh, remit to address will be automatically queued in, into your purchase document, which is obvious as it happens on other scenario. When you look into your shipping and payment, other than other addresses like you had, now there is a remit to code, which is actually about your remit to address. So this code will be used, not the whole address in your document. And when you post your transaction, this code will move to your ledgers and that in turn will be used during payments. So I can just do a on it and let's do one quantity. Let's do the post of it. As soon as I post it, it will also that take that remit to code with it into the ledgers and that will help you while you're trying to make payments. When you come back to your vendor list and you do pay vendor, it'll automatically suggest you which vendors you need to pay for. And I guess this is my payment that I wanted to make. Let's try to create payment for this. Okay. And is that a bank? Yes. And let's see a computer check, I guess. Okay. Here it should show me my remit to code somewhere here. But even at this point, if when it says, okay, that was my default address, but I would like to get payment on my remit to address too, you're going to still change it and you get the right address on your checks when you print them rather than using the default vendor address. Now you have an option to define which of these addresses a vendor would like to be have their check printed on the address printed on the checks when they get printed. So I don't know much about the other localization, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the much needed feature in the North American version of the Central. And that's what this brings into the picture. Okay. This was, if you had customers on SaaS and you haven't seen this, this surely was a thing in the past. So what used to happen that if you build an app which have a dependency on an, on an app which is coming from AppSource, an ISV app. When you deploy that app, when you install that from your extension management page, behind the scene, the compiler used to compile that app against the latest version of that app. So let's say there's an app which is on version 1.5.0, which is available on app source, but on your tenant, on your customer environment, the version that they are using is 1.003. Anytime you install your app, it will always, it was, it used to always compile it against to the latest version that is available on app source, irrespective of whatever the version installed on the client environment. So in some cases, there was problems, there were errors. And this you can see on your admin center, that there might be apps which you have installed on your tenant is 2.7 like this. So the latest one that's available is higher than what you have. So till the previous release of Business Central 20, whenever you install your pertinent extension, which have a dependency with this app, the compiler will always try to compile it against this rather than this. Going forward, it'll always try to compile it with whatever is in the customer environment rather than going and picking the latest one that's available. I've seen it in past causing problems. I don't know about you guys, but this should solve that problem, I guess. Okay. Yeah, and if there are any questions, you can either add them into chats or speak up as we are talking about it. Okay. Let's move to the next item.
which is post item charges for each step of the process. Here I might need your help because I've strung this. I haven't tried it completely, but let's give it a try. It's around the time when you would like to create a purchase order where you have multiple items and then you would like to have a freight around it. The problem was you were never able to do a partial shipment or partial receipt of those because it will always block you saying uh, there is an assignment charge assignment that's missing or you'll have to do both. So what happens now with the center is let's have a look on it. Let's go back and create a purchase document if it's possible. So let's see, let's create a purchase order. And this time we'll create it for three, two items. Let's say this, and let's pick one more and pick this. This will keep it simple. Let's do a quantity of one and one. That brings up here. And then for this, I need to have some charge item again, right? So freight charges against it. So that comes here and then do a freight. Now the freight is one. And then what you'll do is you will go ahead here on the lines and you will do add a charge assignment. I think this is pretty much self explanatory because it was always there. And then you have different ways to assign it. You can either do a suggest charge assignment, do it equally based on amount, based on weight, based on volume, whatever you have. And then you click OK, and it does want it to assign over here. So far, so good, I guess. That's what it was doing in the past. Then we added two item lines, and then we added one item charge, and then we allocated it based on, I guess, amount or weight. That's done. Now you would like to ship it, uh, receive it and invoice it, but you don't want, let's say the first item in the first go. You'll say, oh, I don't find it right now. So I'll just do this receiving of this. So that's where you, what you'll do is that you will come here and you'll say quantity to receive as zero for this item. And correct me if I'm wrong, anyone who is here who knows this. In the past, you would not in this situation will be able to post this document. Is that correct? I haven't tried this way, Saurav, but uh, I mean, if this is the scenario, then what we can do is we can, you know, do the receipt of this item and on invoice level, we put item charge and get receipt lines and assign that item charge to that. So, I mean, that's a different way of doing this thing. Oh, okay. So what happens now is on your item charge assignment window, here, uh, you have a new field called quantity to handle. Now on quantity to handle, if you're not trying to receive the first item, which is this, you can just change it to zero. As soon as you change it to zero, it turns in okay, right, which means there is still pending something on it. And then what you are handling is this part of it. Let's close this. And then one more additional step, and I don't know why there are so many steps you have to come here and do a item charge quantity to handle oh sorry item charge quantity to handle as let me see what it is doing yeah it's just doing the uh, quantity for that only one line 0.16 line so at this point, when I'll try to receive an invoice, this this will automatically only do this for this item. So let's try that. Okay. Let's do that. 
as per the doc, okay, there is some error on that. What it says, it says line amount excluding tax must have a value on line number 30,000. Okay. You have to define the charges for the charge item. Oh, and then sorry. Yeah. What is the error? Direct unit cost must have a value in purchase line document number order one. Instead of line okay. amount, just, just just put in the direct unit cost. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now let's try to post this. I'm only doing the partial receive an invoice. Oh man. You must assign the item charge gb freight if you want to oh i haven't assigned it did it remove the uh, assignment no it did not okay i think i have to do something here which i'm forgetting Okay. Hmm. I think there is a field. There is a field on the type item lines where we need to uh, check this. That these items on which I want to assign the item charge. Yeah, I guess quantity to assign. What is that field? Okay, no. Can you can you go to the page inspection through which we could check out? Okay, let's see. Um, or should I go into personalize so that you can add it if we see it? Yes. Line or field and here and where is the field? Okay. Add field to the page. only posting. No, I'm on the wrong. Area or what? Why it's saying only this? Hmm. Everything else is added. It seems so. Okay, so that means that's not it. Hmm. It could be what possible. To handle they, the they have not added in a page. We can go to the page inspection. There, there will we will definitely find. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, I know when I saw it somewhere, I was sure that there's a field where you need to key in whatever you are receiving. Yes. Uh, you search here. Just type charge in the search. Charge. Okay. Charge, charge. Item charge quantity. Allow, to allow, allow, allow item charge assignment. That's the field. Uh, that's yes, that's not no. If you if you add that, uh, then uh, on the first two lines, we can set it out that we want. Uh, okay, let's quickly go into my what is the design mode? I don't have a design mode. Hmm. Why? Uh, you are in production environment. Oh, seriously. Okay. So you are you gonna just quantity to handle? Where is quantity to handle? What is our line is something in the item charge quantity to handle field. One six four. Wanted to handle. Have it somewhere where I copy it and paste it here somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I might have to do that separately by adding it because that's what it's needed. Item charge. Oh, maybe. Yeah, let me. 
let me rethink. I think I have to change it on quantity to invoice. If I'm not wrong, let's try this out. Okay. Yes, now it changes to non red. So now it's only invoicing this much of charge and then rest is left for the next one. So now let me see if I have anything missed here. Okay. So whatever comes on your item charge quantity to handle based on whatever you have said zero and whatever the delta is, which in this case we have said quantity to handle zero in this case. So the delta is this here. It automatically it automatically brings this number. You manually have to copy this and put it on quantity to invoice. Once you do that and you go to post. We'll go ahead and post it. Now, as soon as it get posted, it automatically changed item charge quantity to handle to zero, which is not right because when you click on it, you will see that there is also one more line which is pending. So in this case, again, you'll have to come back here, change it to or copy this value and do a quantity to handle. Click close. It'll automatically come here and I think you again will have to copy this value item judge quantity to handle and put it here oh no I have already it here okay now before we do that let's look at what we what got, got posted where is that in voice Anybody see it in voice? No. Hmm. Let's post it and let's we'll see that. Okay, so this is two. This time I'm doing the rest, whatever is remaining. And let's do a post and do this. So there are two invoices posted. One is where well, the quantity is one and the charge I do part is this what this much and when you look at the another one 210 that'll have the rest remaining which is there let's see here now it has just the charge item for this item because this was getting uh, shipped or oh, sorry received and for this one only this charge item is attached to this item, which is associated with this item based on that breakage. Any questions thought of on this? Of oh, enough, I guess you have used it. Does this make it easier or is it still the same? Um, different ways of doing it. Uh... That's okay. I mean, I just tried in my environment, so it works with that way. Uh, by changing the that, old way, uh, well, not this way. That the changing that quantity to invoice in the shipment and the charge charge line. So, so like oh, I mean, this okay. this functionality is used. This functionality is like like when you have that where you're going to receive the uh, you know uh, purchase order or when you're going to receive or invoice at the time. If you know the freight charges. That in that case you just put it in the purchase order, and sometimes it's like that you 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 got the order you you got to receive the material, but the freight charges are not known at, at that point of time. In that case you just receive the order, and then once the freight charges are with you, just go and create the purchase invoice, and uh, uh, in the purchase uh, invoice line you just put that item charge right, and then when you go to go to that. Item charge assignment in there you you have the option to fetch the receipt lines and then you you just select the receipt lines which you want to assign the freight and then that's okay mm -hmm. and, and so this is this is this is the functionality this is the purpose of doing the freight so if you know the freight at the time of you know receive the orders then you just assign it to directly on the purchase order and if it is unknown at the time of receiving just do it the the way which I told just just now so that's the two different way of doing it. Okay, that sounds fair. But yeah, remember, I think there is something that 
as a scope for developer to kind of reduce that manual effort where you know you have to copy that file you and assign it anytime there is a change happen on your charge assignment there is always a relation to your line and you can always update that if needed so i don't think that that need to be done manually what i did it should it can automatically with a very small extension if needed if that's the case okay so a while ago i was reading on twitter the people were confused about this one and i was actually super worried I, i looked everywhere possible to see how it is done programmatically but i had some problems in finding that but i guess i figured it out let we'll see that so this is this is one of the things that or feature that's added for the onboarding section where microsoft is continuously working to making onboarding process easier for for the end customers and you as partner save your time uh, instead of supporting them making the apps more useful for the partners so this is a new investment area where microsoft have done some changes which allows partners to build apps in a way that it provide certain set of guidelines to users or to administrator to set up that app as they install them from app source so in business central as of today on business central 20 point the latest version 2022a2 when you go into extension management uh, and you see all your apps which are installed on your environment there's a new action added on each app which is the setup action now what this setup action allows you to do as a user it allows you to run certain step that the app owner have decided are required for this app so let's see and let's have a look on the base microsoft app that did microsoft did something so when you click as a user and go to the setup you may or may not see a list of item like we see on this one this is the list of item that microsoft would like you to set up and configure before you start using the base app it's just helping user to guide around what all setups this app will need it you don't need to have all these setups to be very fair uh let's take the example of shopify connect what microsoft suggests over there as setup is a wizard okay it automatically says that do you want to run this initial setup and you say yes and it automatically starts a wizard where a user can just walk in through around the steps and start setting it up there can be certain apps which just have a page that need to be filled in a new setup that need to be filled in by user which will allow them to use that app like i think it's somewhere in the inventory forecast i think so let me see oh no is something else okay let me see what's there okay this is the whole wizard section okay did a search set up and there can be apps like this where there is no setup required so all the apps that you have built till today will turn up with this error or confirmation message information message as user clicks on the setup but as a app developer you can define is there a wizard that a user need to follow so that he can start doing or using my app as they install it from app source now understand the difference of having an app on app source and building and putting an extension if you have app on app source that means they might they will not come to you for buying that app they can just go to app source click a button and install that app on their tenant so you, you want to make your app that intuitive or that helpful that user can set up and configure that app by themselves without your support and that's where this feature comes into the picture which is the setup feature where you can define different kind of pages maybe a wizard maybe a list page that'll help user to kind of set that up 
Now, as we saw on the base app that there are multiple setups available when you go into the setup. You can also have multiple setup processes for your app if it's a big app or a small app based on how big or small it is. While defining the setup page, pages, there is an option of defining is it a primary setup? If it's a, if it is one of the primary setup. And the difference between defining one of these setup as primary is as soon as user comes and installs an app from app source, the primary setup will automatically start. And others can be run as user want them later on, but the primary will automatically kick off. Now I went ahead, search everywhere on my app saying, okay, I need to test it out. I need to go and check well, on the base app where Microsoft have listed all this and found nothing. And nothing means nothing. So I started reading about it. Didn't find much detail on Microsoft website or on uh, on the what do we call that uh, MSDN. But what I was able to found find, and that's where then I looked into the BC uh, base app. You can do it with something called as guided tools or guided experience, if I'm not wrong. So let me open my presenter. Oh, sorry. VS Code. So I looked at app.json. There was nothing. I looked at different properties in your app file. There was nothing from Microsoft. So then I went back and read, uh, reread the feature that Microsoft listed on MSDN, which is this, which gave me a specific direction. But nothing major entered. So what it says here, it's an ability to get an overview of setup pages brought by the app if the app registers those pages into something called as guided experience item table. I kind of overlooked this statement while I was reading it for the first time. So any setup process that you have, if you register that setup page or setup process into your guided experience, it will automatically get added against your extension keyword. As soon as your extension gets installed, it automatically gets into the guided experience. And as soon as it gets into the guided experience, it gets automatically added into the setup, this app action that you see. Now, how did this guided experience work was surely an interesting thing to know. So let me see if it gets downloaded and if I have access to the base app somewhere. Because I normally learn from base app or any other app in the system. So we saw that Shopify have one. So let's go and search for Shopify because that will be easier to see. And let's open that in code. As I'm not an expert on this, so it will be easier to find here somewhere Microsoft would have written that. So let's search for that. Now we know the word guided experience. Okay. So it seems they have something around it. And let's go into this. Okay, let's come here. Oh yeah. So what Microsoft have done on the Shopify one is that they have this even subscriber for all of the login, which is not needed, I guess. There is one for guided experience that for that checks for guided experience. These are checklists. There are different kind of guided experience, but what we want is okay. So this is the event that we would like to call, which is so like these are the different type of guided experience that you can add. I, you can either either add a tour, which is a wizard which walks you through around. Then there is an assisted setup, as you see on most of the area. You can also add a hyperlink to an article on your company's website, which talks about how to utilize this. And you can also add a video. That's also one of those type in the guided experience type that you have. And then based on that, you can start doing this uh, event subscriber to register that. 
and then there is a specific process for that or specific set of actions that you need, which is here. So you can do a insert. So when you do a guided experience dot, you will see all these different options. So what these different options are is varies based on what type of data you are inserting into the guided experience. And if if you guys think it makes sense, we can surely do a demo next time. But you will see these setup options for your app. So do you think that your app have something that will help users to set them up automatically? If that's the case, then you have to go and enable the guided experience so that user sees those when they get into the setup app. And as I said, if you get into the demo or do a little bit more reading about the guided experience into the center, one of the parameter on this, these method is, is this a primary setup? And if it is a primary setup, it automatically runs as soon as your app gets installed. Okay. Anything else? I guess we are already at our time. So we will continue next week then in that case. Okay. Any other questions on that? Or did I stop? Okay. But I'm... We'll talk about this next week, rest of the stuff. Any specific topic and you would like to anyone would like to complete first from the list of what's new. My plan is to maybe complete in the next two weeks of time permits. But any yeah, if there are so, any thoughts, go ahead. Yeah, Padan, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I would like to know about the partner led localizations and how that works because I tried doing that for one and it was just uh, the normal w1 version of business central so nothing special that i could find in the localized version of business central for which country for pakistan uh did you try on business central SaaS? yeah uh when you tried it on uh recently maybe, or a while ago yeah yeah re very recently maybe uh last week i guess so because I had a tenant uh, intern for the company and uh, there I tried making one for locally for Pakistan and uh, I couldn't find any specific uh, Pakistan localized version of it. It was just the normal uh, W1 version uh, that contains VAT and things like that. Okay. As what I'm understanding here, based on the website, I'm just assuming this at this mm. moment. Uh, it should be available from November, right? Which yeah. is right around right the time when you are checking it. I haven't tested it that were they available or not. But as for documentation, the region expansion, and do you see the uh, your localization uh, version when you do a new environment or you don't? Yeah, yeah, of course I do. Oh, you do see that. Yes. But you don't see a localized app or extension for your region. Yes, That's exactly. Nothing. Nothing got in regards to that. Ah, OK. That's odd. Yeah, because uh, then I tried uh, making one for an Indian version, and uh, I did saw a lot of apps, especially the GST, the TDS uh, sort of apps. And that was uh, really fascinating but uh, nothing for Pakistan. Yeah, and I guess they come by default. I'll have to check uh, because normally they are also available on app source. And let me see, I guess for India they are there. Yeah. And, and then I tried uh, installing the uh, Indian TDS and GST uh, apps in the Pakistan localized version, but then uh, it's failed because it states that uh, you're not allowed to install the cross version uh, 
localized yeah. versions of the apps. So, yeah. Nice. So right now it doesn't show one. Is when the holding tax for Israel and this and this and this. That's it. Let me see other countries because there are other countries that are Oman. Is there something for Oman? Because normally, if it's an app supported by, uh, why this one is coming every time? Excel. Oh, there might be countries added. Okay. Because normally, whenever a version is released, those apps will also be able. You will be able to search them into extension marketplace or business yeah. center. It's good, right? So, like, so maybe there is a delay, which I don't know yet. I. You are part of that Yammer group from Microsoft as in everybody is invited. There's nothing. I will uh, go ahead and try checking there if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Because none of the countries, not just Pakistan, but none of the countries are visible in the app source at this moment uh, as a localization where you, as you see uh, for India, uh, all these apps are available. Yeah. So they get automatically bundled in with that uh, environment when you create it for that region. Mm -hmm. So maybe those apps are not yet ready. And that's the reason you don't see it. I will still wait for CU2 and see maybe then they come up. If they don't, I'll try to see if I can ask that question on the Yammer group from Microsoft. And if I get some clarity, I'll let you know. That's all okay, right. perfect. Great. Okay, anything else, anyone? Okay, so then we'll see you next week. If in this list, if you think anything is important, I'm trying to cover things so that they all of them are covered, which are a little bit explanation needed or something is needed. But if you think something is more important for you, uh, just let me know somewhere and I'll make sure we cover it next week. Okay, thank you then. Enjoy your weekend and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man.